Obviously, Instagram is not going to sponsor a video on my channel. I have like 80 subscribers. Yeah, bitches! Welcome to my channel. Today's video, believe it or not, is actually brought to you by Instagram. And not sponsor-wise or ad-wise. I mean, I wish. <laughs> I don't think I've seen Instagram sponsor any videos on YouTube, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Recently, I've been following a lot of gymnastics channels, and somehow I stumbled across the forever glamorous Russian icon Oksana Fabrichneva, or Oksana Kolozina, which is her married name that is her Instagram handle. <laughs> Now, I mentioned back in my Svetlana Horkina video that it was during the 94 Goodwill Games in St. Petersburg where I became forever, completely, and officially Russian Gymnastics One member of that team was Oksana, so she will always be one of the OG original Russians that I idolized. She was a true vision on all the events. She had clean bars, a fabulous beam that we'll get to later, and a sassy floor routine. <laughs> a few sassy floor routines, in fact. Oksana was one of the first gymnasts to compete for an independent Russia after the breakup of the Soviet Union. At just 14 years of age, she made her big debut at the 93 Worlds. She made quite the splash of that meet, finishing 5th in the all-around and 6th in beam finals. Even more excitingly, she made a huge and her own personal individual contribution to the sport forever, debuting a new dismount off the uneven bars, a double twisting double back somersault in tuck position, which was accordingly named after her in the code of points. This dismount has been done, uh, I wouldn't say a lot, but it's been done a few times over the years. At the most recent Olympics, Simone Biles and Vika Lestunova both competed this dismount. It's an incredibly difficult skill. And because of this contribution by Oksana, her name has never been too far away from the sport, and I've always been so happy about that. So the following year, in 94, Oksana again made the Russian team for individual worlds, and same as the prior year, she again found herself in beam finals. And that is the routine we're going to take a gander at today. Yep. So I love this black Leo. It's so classic with the like the mesh here and the straps. Ugh. <laughs> Front semi mount right to a sassone that she holds in a scale. Lovely. Fabrichneva was incredibly stylish. Look at the toe point. Look at the positions and the way she moves her arms. The whole the poses that she holds is so good. <laughs> Three layouts. It's like boom, boom, boom. Sounds like gunshots. And I love how she holds her pose like this on the third layout. Ugh, little hand. <laughs> love it. Front somersault, little low and definite check. Split jump, back handspring. Again, that finishing pose I just love. It's different. That skill which is like a, uh, like a back dive to her back. Very unique, I had never seen anything like that. The first time I saw it, it really scared me. <laughs> Lovely full turn. Gorgeous elegance. As Monica Phelps would say, she has a lovely shoulder line. <laughs> Switch leap, wolf jump. She's setting up for her dismount. Ugh. She's gonna do a round off full twisting double back and just a hop back. Ugh. Quality. <laughs> stunning, stunning work. Ugh. What a dream. I just. Fabrich never gives me the vapors. Love her. Love her. I would never deduct for that third layout. This good lift, good set on that full twisting double back. And there was her score, a 9712. 
So as I mentioned, there were a couple of tiny deductions in that routine after her front tuck and then a hop back on the dismount. And she wound up in third place, winning the bronze medal behind Shanna Miller and Lilia Pokopaeva. As I said at the top, Oksana then competed at the 1994 Goodwill Games that summer. And then in the fall, she competed for Russia at the team worlds in Dortmund. That year was weird. They had two world championships. In 1996, Oksana just missed making the Russian Olympic team and served as an alternate. She retired shortly thereafter, and I actually had no idea what she had been up to since then, and that was until I stumbled upon her Instagram. <laughs> Social media saving lives. Who would have thunk it? It's not surprising that Oksana remains just as stylish and striking today. She and her husband Dimitri have a daughter named Irina. She seems like such a kind and lovely person. I looked up how to say uh, beautiful in Russian and I commented on one of her pictures and she liked it and said thank you. I just thought that was so sweet of her. She didn't have to do that. I just love her. I'm not sure that she speaks English. She probably doesn't, but I'm really hoping that I can find a way to get the subtitled in Russian so I can send her a link because I would love for her to see this video. It's rare that a gymnast herself in the present day inspires me to make a video about her gymnastics career, but that's what happened here. I mean, I guess there's a first time for everything. Here's to you, Oksana. That was me toasting my imaginary alcoholic drink with my imaginary companion slash friend or something. And I wanted to say a little Russian for Oksana. She was Udivitilni. Close. I tried. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really, really appreciate it. Please lightly tap that like button if you like this video. Please subscribe. Please comment for engagement. And I will see everybody in my next one. Prends soin de toi. Bonne journée. Au revoir. Bye loves.